So we're going to paint a digital drawing of the same landscape that he'll be doing with oil and canvas. Uh, we're going to do a little two-hour challenge. It was his idea. I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I'm realizing in my little viewer that my face is so shiny. I got white light with clouds out there, out there, and I really should have should have did something with all of this before the stream. I put the hat on to uh, cover up this just just mess that's going on up there. Yes, ladies, I got a full head of hair, but I uh, felt like it was my civic duty to cover up that grease ball with uh, my American flag hat, American flag back there. Why do I love America? Because we have a free and open society that the public supports the First Amendment every single day with freedom of speech. I just saw a shocking video from Brooklyn of a passerby with a cell phone camera uh, took footage of Brooklyn, one of Brooklyn's hospitals, healthcare workers loading up bodies into the back of a refrigerator truck using a forklift. Sorry to say, but uh, in other parts of the world, Maybe like the place where this virus came from, you don't have that right to film other people and to broadcast it. And that's why I'm here. We're finding out the truth on a real and everyday basis. I think Italy has been warning us and trying to prepare us for what's coming. Can you be fully prepared? No. Uh, I think you can just go about your life in a responsible manner and try to be productive is the best thing to do. So I applaud Dustin and Art Craftsmanship for encouraging me to still be productive uh, during this difficult time. And now I'm going to be encouraging all of you and hopefully setting some kind of example to be doing work. It's about one uh, in the afternoon here. I just had some lunch. Uh, we, we ditched coffee for today. We're trying Coca-Cola, old, uh, you know, thing old thing and we're gonna try to draw something here uh, I'm setting up the rest of my stream right now so if you could just uh, hang on with me a second um, gonna get this all set up it takes a minute I'm still figuring out this whole business and this again this is part of my process of learning about streaming about sharing about teaching the different software that's out there to um, do this kind of stuff. Again, I'm, I'm putting on the headphones on kind of out of habit. I'm not really using them for that much. I'll keep one ear on because I think I can hear if someone pings me in the comments. It's a, it's a weird thing. All right, it looks like we're streaming. looks like we're live. It's a beautiful day outside. Beautiful day. So we're going to honor that nice mid-Atlantic weather, springtime. March 30th with some drawing. All right, so hopefully you all have understood what the image is that's going on here. I'm going to be moving that image over to my other monitor, and that way we can start our drawing process um, and hopefully uh, create something that's cool. Create something that's cool. Landscape, environment, that's, that's the theme of today landscape environment and maybe we'll take it somewhere interesting uh, illustratively in two hours we're not going to get every little bit of detail in here we're just kind of going to get the gist of it and then stylize it to communicate whatever the artist in my case me thinks is important to communicate to the viewer with this environment I'm going to look at my image and squint my eyes a little bit and blur it out and see what the most common color is we can do that uh, in Photoshop too. I'm going to copy that image that Dustin sent me and put it into my canvas here. Shrink it way down. Looks like we got the text uh, I put in there as well. Shrink it way, 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 way down. And uh, just hit it up with a blur. <laughs> I don't know how we got to text. To, it's okay. It's okay. This is something that we do sometime in video games is if you want to get to the root of the color, we blur the heck out of it. So I'm applying a Gaussian blur. Gaussian burr? Blur? Burr? 
Ladies and gentlemen, language is my second language. Speaking is not the first thing I think about. I think about the visuals first, and then I have to visualize the words coming out of my mouth, and then put them through my mouth. It's this whole chain of events that's very complicated. So we can set the amount of pixels, the radius of the pixel that we want to blur out. So this, this might work out pretty well for us. If you wanted to quickly paint over this scene, blurring it at 60 pixels each, I, what am I what am I getting from here? I can use my color picker and see that we have this cloud blue color. We have a sky blue color. We have the horizon line tree line color, which is this kind of sagey dark green. We have a dead grass or old grass, flat dark earth color, and then we have the live grass color and there's probably a little olive all of drab color here too. So with this, these six colors, you can establish a landscape pretty quick. You know, think of, see, see that? You know, I can just select uh, an area of my canvas, decide where her horizon line is. I'm looking at the looking at the photograph Dustin sent me. It's right right in the middle. He's holding it straight up and down, 50% horizon line. And I could pick the darkest color and draw that line right through the middle. We could do it with an airbrush too, so it blends. Let's airbrush that color right through the middle. And then we have sky blue, cloud, cloud, no more scouts. Fill the whole thing with sky blue, cloud, cloud. And then we have this gradient of less saturated, what is it, yellower? Greener, same level of saturation about, and then more saturated and dark going from middle to bottom. And I think that creates a good amount of volume. So boom, boom, boom. And we already have like foreground, middle ground, background, sky kind of environment. And you know, this could be anywhere. This could be a reflection for an environment map, a reflection map. You can make chrome out of this. You can crank the contrast up or down, however you want to work. Um, so that's going to be the general gist of the colors that we have back there. So for this painting, I'm just going to take that image and stretch that across the background of the canvas. And that's just going to be our background. Well, then we establish what the foreground is going to be about. Let's see. Alt, shift, kind of stretches it across. Cool. So that's just, you know, where we're getting started. Huh? That's kind of cool. Fine. No biggie. No big thing. No big thing. Uh, and then on top of that, let's let's do some drawing. What makes this interesting. So Dustin's gonna paint this landscape. Uh, so let's like, lock the background layer here. Let's just fully lock it. Hit the little padlock looking thing. Call it background base colors. When you're a painter. You're looking at your subject, you got your palette, you're mixing your color, you're looking, you're mixing your color, you know, make, pick a little, little bit of that red, a little bit of this yellow, let's pick that, you know, sit back, look at it again, get the canvas, mark, you know, thum, thum, thum. you know, okay, I got this color mix, let me hit all the areas that have that same color, right, this area's got it, this area's got it, this area's got it, uh, that's one way to do it, and of course, there's a bazillion ways to do it. Um, Photoshop, like, the color is just immediate and easy and picking. So I'm not spending all this time mixing the color. Uh, I'm going to be thinking more about, is the whole image interesting? And what can I rejigger and rearrange to make it interesting? So first, we'll start with the sketch. And just throw down some marks. Right, I see there's, like, two kind of matching trees on the left. You know what? That's, that's too specific. Even even that's too darn specific right now. Really, really simple. Tree, tree, bigger tree, slightly left of center, uh, very fanny tree, like fanned out, not like fanny, like you're behind, but like you know, this kind of fan. A uh, small tree behind it. Tree here. Uh, looks like a, a green... Uh, conifer there, bush, bush, 
But a rule of threes is, is usually good, small, medium, large. This is a nice compositional element. You have a small thing, have a medium thing, and then uh, between somewhere else have a tall have a tall big thing. This this is interesting. This is a rule I learned from the illustrator Taylor Fisher, who uh, was also a Mike alum like myself. I met her at uh, Firaxis where she was an intern and then got hired full time. We worked together briefly on Civ Five, I believe, and uh, she has a. Patreon following now. I recommend checking her out. Taylor Fisher. Some not safe for work stuff. Not safe for the kids stuff, but still really cool. I recommend. Recommend checking it out if you're an adult. Um, big into elves and fairies and fantasy stuff. Uh, very nice. I think her uh, deviant arts like Beastly Sakura, something like that. Taylor Fisher. I think there's a F I S C H E R. Very talented, very talented young artist. Um, as is the concept artist who kind of replaced her at Firaxis, Cat Berkeley. I believe they're friends and have a somewhat similar style, but both very good and capable. Cat did a lot of the great concept drawing for Civilization VI. All the characters, the wonderful um, um, leader characters for that game. I think she had a hand in. Uh, designing those and uh, a lot of life, a lot of character to it. I mean, the, the concept artist's role is to make decision making for the modeler a lot easier. If you come up with a really good plan, and that's what a concept is concept is beginnings of a plan for someone else to do the actual construction. Um, you want it to solve as many problems as possible because it's hard enough to build the thing. If you're somebody out there who does manual labor or like, likes to actually make stuff from wood or from paper mache like real world objects not digital stuff like I do like this is just goofy junk you can make real world objects like Dustin does Dustin makes axes and knives and bows and all kinds of cool tools and stuff uh, that's a lot of work and it's hard enough just to make the thing being creative in that process is a whole other level alright so that's kind of the middle ground um, in the background, we have another tree line. I'm just going to draw the silhouette of that. There's like these two peaks here, and then it goes up a hill. There's some kind of brownish dead looking. Uh, I mean, the leaves haven't sprouted here yet. It's still, it's not April 30th. It's May. It's March. I wrote the wrong date down. That's how, that's how bad this case of the Mondays is. This is the worst. <laughs> All right, this is... There's some very, very green grass back here. It looks like a golf course. You know, not many people playing golf today. It's probably the best time to play golf. Like, think about social distancing. Like, it's you and your poor party of four. You could even all have your own little cart. You know, that's in the wrong spot. There's a big bushy red tree. Uh, it's like starting to sprout red bits. We're just going to make those little, like, hint here. Decision. You know, establishing decisions. Red there green on this thing here um, green on uh, this thing here that's pretty cool then um, and it's a pretty solid conifer uh, back here what's interesting about that tree to me is there is a main trunk and just one limb that comes off to the left like let's do that right Hit the eraser Hit the eraser hard. Let's redo that. What this one tree down here is doing is it's like a very dark shape going up and right. And then like a little shape. It's also in the shadow going this way. And then there's a dark color here. Alright, so you you're watching me go through this and just try to translate what was an interesting photo into a not very interesting drawing. Let me get rid of yeah, the most interesting thing in this drawing right now is the three imaginary boxes that I put in the foreground. Let me get rid of that. We're gonna make this interesting. We're gonna figure out how to make this cool uh, for for me. And don't you worry about making cool things for me. That's what I'm worried about. You think about in your mind right now. How do you make it cool for you? What would you do differently? Devin's checking in. Uh, Devin says we are we are checking in. Dustin is still getting his paints ready. Cool, uh, sounds good, brother man. Sounds good, brother. Let's go. What? 
All right, so in the foreground, me personally am not that interested in grass. But my job is to, I've been tasked with this. The universe, in, in this case, Dustin and Devin, have given me this task to make this interesting for me. So I got to learn about grass real quick. I got to make myself excited about grass. How do I do that? Well, I look at it. I look at it, number one. I try to problem solve. What's there? What am I actually seeing? What am I actually looking at here? So there's so many small details. Individual, Each individual blade of grass is just too overwhelming. But I can see these masses. I don't think you layer. Solve it here. Grass is. And we might be looking at in this photograph. All right, I gotta. I, I'm looking at the wrong date here. I gotta. I gotta change. This is just incorrect. It's just incorrect. Why, for the love of God, did I write April 30 and not March? March 30. I'm thinking about April next month. Month of April. April, May, June, July. Uh, quarantine will end someday. So if I zoom in here, look. There's there's a gazillion blades of grass. There's just too many. There's just too many. We talk about management in game development and in life in general. The military has figured out that you can only have seven direct reports. If you have more than seven direct reports, it's too stressful because you need each direct report requires an hour of your day. You work an eight-hour day. For you to be any kind of efficient to the organization, you need to take care of your seven reports and still have time left for you to do you. Do you do your job? So, more than seven things... If there's more than seven things, you have to take those other things that are more than seven and then group them together in some way. Or take your previous seven things, group them together in some way, and assign a leader. That's called delegation. All right, you ten blades of grass, uh, you're just going to have to pick one of you guys to be the leader for your group. And that's going to be this guy right here. There's going to be a tall old dude here. He's the leader, and then you're a platoon of grass blades. Uh, working in this organization, you know, so so I'm going to think about this giant cluster of crazy as like gold leader and his squad of grass blades, and that's just going to be a clump. So this approximation of all that kind of stuff is what landscape painters are doing all the time. They're just doing it in terms of shapes. I'm doing it in terms of individuals organizationally scaled down to one thing. Tom lost his mind. He's talking about grass. So I have to look at this landscape that it's just a freaking mess of blades of grass and twigs and sticks and think about how do I organize it into some kind of logical manner. As I zoom in, I'm seeing like gathered clumps of, of, kind of field grass that is becoming some kind of shape. So maybe I'm going to think about exaggerating that shape there there's some specificity I'm actually as I'm zooming in I'm starting to see the organization I see a leader and then I see things gathered around that leader I see a unit all right so we're getting somewhere we're starting to get excited maybe through anger maybe getting pissed off at this assignment I'm actually trying to figure out a way to gamify it for myself and make it interesting and my chair won't won't participate with my movements across the floor here come on buddy let's work together I spent $300 on a freaking pad the carpet so you can wheelie around my, my fat ass uh, as we get across the floor. Sorry for my language, it's just appropriate at this time. We're worried about the, the fall of society right now and we're making landscape paintings. That This is the world we live in. What would Yoda say about this? Great Master Yoda, what do you think we should do right now about uh, COVID? You should stay in place, you shall. You should. All right, all right. I'm gonna put you back down, Master Yoda. I'm putting you back down. Let's go. Let's go. What are we doing? We're gonna. So I'm seeing there's an area of dark. Not that dark. This kind of dark green. I'm seeing a shape here, and then there's a bigger shape here. All right. So we get that, we get that, we get that, and then there's a big tan shape in the foreground. There's a cluster of bushes. We're gonna push them to be more purple, cause uh, just to 
to separate that. It's this band of ruffians of purple right here. Oh, I'm just so angry. Just so angry at landscapes. You know, where's the tanks? Where's the bombers? Where's the superhero action figures in this thing? All right, Dustin. I'm, I'm going to put up with it for you, man. I'm going to put up with it. All right, so we got some clusters over here. Uh, I mean, Dustin, at the end of this, is going to have a beautiful oil painting. I'm going to have schmutz, this digital schmutz. And we're going to go purple. Actually cut off. The, the photograph I'm looking at is much wider than the canvas I have here. So I'm going to extend the canvas to the right. Width. 36. That's cool. That's about right. Let's take that background. Stretch it out. Unlock it first. Shift. Boom. All right. Got our color back there. Cool. You know, he, when he, Dustin's the landscape expert. I have to uh, rest my opinions on this matter and belay it to him that he assigns value to this. So therefore, I should assign value to his expertise in this field is quite a lot greater than mine. He went to grad school for landscape painting in New Hampshire uh, and uh, knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Just like Allstate. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Today's lunch is provided by Bagel Works of Hunt Valley. You know, funny, you didn't know this, Dustin, but I was close by and uh, decided not to visit you to spare you from the COVID. But I thought about it. Thought about it. Didn't want to tell you until right now. I was saving it for the webcast. Could have thrown a rock and hit you. Could have thrown a rock. It would have fallen from the sky and landed right by your feet. And you'd be like, what happened? Is that a meteorite? Ah, <laughs> it was Tom in the bushes. Throwing sticks. All right, here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. It's like a wall. It looks like some kind of Zelda artificial wall thing. It's supposed to be trees. It's, just, it's the darkest thing on the canvas, so it's kind of coming out. It's kind of kind of strong at us. <laughs> Drew, I was wondering where you were. Got to get my Simons on. Welcome, Drew. Talking about your brother, as you probably heard. Uh, your genetic bonding with your siblings, ears burning. Talking about how Dustin's pissing me off with making me draw landscapes today. No sci-fi robots, no airplanes, no, you know, superheroes from Guardians of the Galaxy. We're going to be doing landscape. We're going to be drawing trees. Let me draw trees. <laughs> giving me, giving y'all a hard time. So it's talking about clustering things. Like, how do you simplify the the detail in the past? So I'm, you gotta zoom in and see something that's interesting. Like, I think this as a whole is not very interesting to me. But if, when I zoom in, what's this gray thing here? Is that a bird? Oh no, it's just a dead leaf on a stick. But still, that kind of caught my attention. It's different from the environment. Patterns are something that people look for across all things. Patterns, if, if behavior is in a pattern, then we can predict what's going to happen in the future. Like the seasons moving, the sky, the night sky, breathing cycles, uh, move, movement. You know, If we can find patterns in something, we can predict that, and that makes us a better hunter. So the pattern I'm starting to see is that when there's more than just a couple pieces of this dead grass, it starts to clump together around the larger object. So I'm just going to take the idea of what's going on here. We have some kind of stick, some kind of bush, vine thing that's growing, and then the grass is clumping around that. Maybe the grass around that is dying. Maybe that, maybe that's what happened. It was like that stick is taking more of the nutrients, and the grass underneath of it is dying and collapsing around it. In any case, uh, I think that's interesting. So I'm going to put some of that down here. And I'm going to do it kind of big. I'm going to do. I'm going to make it bigger because otherwise I'm overwhelmed with too much stuff to do. So we have uh, a couple of these things coming out, and I'm just making it up because uh, I don't really care that much. We're gonna, and then we're gonna create this little campfire of uh, dead kind of grasses around it, and see where we can go. I'm going to be shaking my head this entire 
free web crass. Web crass. That's what this is. It's a web crass. You'll be crass while streaming on the web. Wasting bandwidth, wasting electricity. And y'all along for the ride. You're stuck in here with me. Actually, you're not. Please, please choose something else more entertaining to do if uh, you have something more entertaining. If this is the most entertaining thing you have right now to watch, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I hear that, that Tiger King show is really good. I hear that's hilarious. Some guy has a bunch of tigers in, like, Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, some wonderful flyover state. <laughs> it's probably, like, Dallas. Uh, you know, not a flyover location at all. Look, there's nice people out there. I was recently in Boise, Ohio. Ohio Idaho. Ohio? I was in Ohio, too, but I didn't stay very long. I drove right through Ohio. Whoop. zippity doo dog getting out of Ohio. I was in Boise, Idaho. Why do you think they, they let that stand? When there was, like, when they were handing out state names, we already got this Ohio-sounding name. We don't need another Ohio-sounding thing. Come up with something new. Like, just north, just, just north there is this great state called Montana. That's a great name. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. Great. Great. Can Idaho come up with something a little better? Now, I know it's a Native American tribe that was there, and they have a cool name. Dakota. Lakota. Very cool. I mean, they probably should have, you know, separated those terms. We got the L. Oda. And then we got the D. Oda. Maybe, maybe like a Another syllable in there, make it a little more distinct from each other. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I'm in rare form today. I think it was because I was watching Dr. Disrespect, who was a Twitch streamer, playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone and losing his mind in single player. Losing his mind. And then that it's just so frustrating. That game, I mean, I, squads, I think, is a lot of fun. Like any game where you're playing with squads, you, know, you and two or three other buddies, and you're all working together, immediately more fun. You're all joking with each other. You're having a good time. You're just talking smack, getting riled up, making people laugh. You know, you could be the worst team in the game, and you're still going to be having more fun if you're playing. If you're just playing by yourself, there's little campers hanging out in the bushes. Some, some kid, some 12-year-old, with a foul mouth is like hiding behind under one of these stick piles and uh, is waiting for you to come up upon him with minigun with some kind of oozy thing. It's a video game, it's virtual, it's okay. And you're just like, I spent 30 minutes walking over this whole map, parachuting out of an airplane, looking for some place to hide, getting some gear, getting some equipment, and this 12 year old uh, out of nowhere just snaps, you know, snaps the life out of me with no conversation, and uh, that triggered. The, the famous streamer, Dr. Disrespect, to lose his mind. And, uh, to rage quit. That's what I'm thinking about now. I'm not going to rage quit on you, Dustin, and Devin, and Drew. I'm, st I'm sticking in this. The full two hours. I'm giving it the full deuce. The full deuce. I'm here. Doesn't mean I can't complain about it. Now, if you're a student and you're watching this stream and you're thinking, like, you probably can relate. I have this assignment. You know, my teacher is telling me to draw this thing that I don't want to draw. I don't want to draw. I don't want to make this thing. I've got better things to do with my time. How do you rationalize that to yourself? How do you stick through doing something that you don't want to do? You're not motivated. Well, there's always going to be things in life that you're going to have to do and not want to do. Um, cleaning up messes, for instance. Like if you don't clean up that mess, it's going to turn into an infectious uh, bacteria pile, and no one wants that. So it could have negative implications to your health if you don't take care of your business and you make a mess. So doing assignments that you don't think are justified or cool when you're young is a way to experience adversity and how do you deal with doing things you don't want to do well right now you see how I'm dealing with it I'm getting mad I'm getting angry and that's how I'm dealing with it I'm using I'm channeling 
my anger energy into work because it's giving me this kind of adrenaline boost. This semi like little bit of adrenaline. Where I'm gonna I'm gonna mm, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave a steaming pile of something on Dustin's doorstep one of these days. And it's gonna be this it's gonna be the printout of this painting on fire is what it's gonna be. Not his, not this thing. I'm going to print this out, waste that ink, and then leave it on his doorstep. I, I, I'm just, my process is so bumped out of this. I'm going to pick that back color, create a new layer uh, above the background, and just fill in the hill that's here because it just looks terrible right now. Just that jagged line. Yeah, just, uh, it's just, so, it's just so upsetting, this whole thing. And still were more productive if I hadn't shown up here. Like, I'm mad but productive. And I think that's an okay place to be in. I don't think anger is a bad thing. I think anger is a very motivating thing to people. You know, I love the way my stepfather handles, uh, handles being upset at people. He just puts a smile on his face. He's like, all right, you know, you, you made your bed. You're going to sleep in it. I'm going to you know, pick up this mess you left. But, oh, you know, you're just a funny guy. You know, he kind of. He wears his anger with a smile on his face, in a way. He calls everybody Jock. Like if someone cuts him off in traffic, he's like, uh, good on you, Jock. It's Scott Irish. I don't know what it means, like calling everybody Jocks. It can be bad and good. He uses it both ways. It's like a, it's like an F-bomb for, for 78, 80-year-old Scott Irishman. Jock. There you go, Jock. Just take your time with the light, Jock. Why don't you, uh, you know, leave your shopping cart at the checkout counter while you run back and get your gallon of milk that you forgot, Jock. Oh, yeah, don't even try to get toilet paper right now. That's all sold out. You don't have to get paper towels and then throw that outside. You know, I just say, just go in the shower. Just do it like uh, I'll get the giant. You know. As the horses do, I just go walk in the field without my pants on. Walk around, do my business, keep walking. I do. That's not what I do, ladies and gentlemen. That's not what I do at all. I'm just being silly, trying to make this entertaining. Let's go. We're painting stuff. I'm see what what I'm doing now. I've abandoned any sense of process. I'm just picking colors and making shapes. Picking colors and making shapes. Picking colors and making shapes. We got some kind of tree thing here. Uh, dude, I combined two trees here. I'm I'm looking at there's two. What am I even doing? What am I even doing? Okay. I combined I combined two things visually here. I combined this conifer with thin branches and the one right in front of it. I think. That was supposed to be that tree. Okay. The whole the whole thing is jacked. Just oh, it's just such a mess. Okay. I see. All right, so this is going to be the cluster of evergreens that's in the right. It goes off into the woods. There's going to be an evergreen with less branches here, and then there's going to be a deciduous tree that's kind of frail in front of that. This tree is going to be here, and I, I can't even. There's so much detail when the, when the leaves aren't on it. You just have all these little stringy uh, branches and tree stuff. So when I was in a better frame of mind, I did another landscape last week, and that worked out a lot better. I was a little bit more um, organized and thoughtful um, about that image. We're going to open that for you right now, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I was going to. Oh, here it is. So I thought about each part of this landscape as its own individual piece. And I really cared about this image from the foreground element and then things that were adding to it. You know, I spent like four or five hours on this. Planning it is another video that's earlier on my timeline. You can check that out if you want. This, I feel like, it's just an overwhelming problem to solve. Maybe this whole process is going to give me some appreciation uh, for some landscape painters out there. Because, uh, you know, that's that's a skill set I just uh, I don't have. You know, to, to develop talent, I think the Talent Code book talks about this a little bit, is that is it really talent like are you really born with an innate ability or is it just the thing that you like do you just 
you like doing a thing, therefore you do it more often, therefore you're going to be better at it. I think that's probably more likely. I like drawing. It was a way to kill time for me. I was a latchkey kid, home alone, a lot of my childhood. And it's probably why I'm doing so well right now in the quarantine. That's being facetious, ladies and gentlemen. I'm losing my mind. We are going to survive this together. But we're all going to be a little changed. We're all going to be a little different. We're all going to be a little bit more Jim Carrey after this is all over. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if there's like 50,000 Jim Carreys with Dr. Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog after this is all over? Whoo! More Fire Marshal Bill. Better have your PPE. I could see uh, Dustin, Drew, and Devin's mutual friend uh, Charlie doing a really good Fire Marshal Bill impression right now. Yeah, I could see him. Fire Marshal Bill. For you youngins, for you Zoomers out there who don't remember Fire Marshal Bill, he was a hilarious Jim Carrey created character for. Uh, a sketch comedy show called um, was it in living color no that can't be right what was the name what was the name of that show drew that drew carey was jim carey was on uh it was like a, it was a competitor with saturday night live but it was more zany it's crazy i want to say in living color is that right Internets. Uh, Fire Marshal. Yeah, Fire Marshal Bill. What the? The magic. Man, this guy was just awesome. Like he would show up and just be absolutely insane. Living, yeah, in living color, right? He was totally crazy. And like it's amazing how skeletal Jim Carrey made his face. But he's clearly out of his mind. The guy was completely out of his mind. And the whole fire marshal bill was like someone who had uh yeah, everyone's everyone's <laughs> typing a million times. There we go. Uh right, Brandon joined up. Finally. Good. Brandon, I'm losing my mind here drawing a landscape that Dustin sent me because it's got too much information and not enough um Explosion. So what what are we gonna do this to, we gotta make this thing interesting. We gotta make this thing interesting uh for Tom here and not that it's not interesting for other people, just for me, what does this thing need in it to make it interesting for me? We're gonna go to my reference section that says hardware and we're gonna start looking at tanks. What kind of massive land vehicle can we throw? Some like forty tons of armor can we put in this scene, oh yeah, attack gunship, that'd be cool. Uh, how about, um, no, landing craft too big, five inch guns, maybe, Lynx helicopter, ooh, Soviet missile from the Cold War, could be, helicopter flying a Humvee, possibly. Um, we need, we need uh, their, their brother Derek to come in and, uh, you know what, this prototype thing's going in there. What is this? It looks like a prototype long-range gun system. Uh, that's going to have to just uh, show up in, into the scene to make it, it, it remotely interesting for me to continue working on. So we're going to find that there. We're going to put we're going to put the gun carriage over on the left, and uh, we're going to we're going to get this thing started here. We, we, I didn't even make it 40 minutes. 40 minutes of drawing, and uh, Tom's like, we need um, something with some treads. Uh, in the scene to to make it worth my time to keep working on this drawing. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what I did throughout all of college. You know, there'd be a uh, model, a, like a figure model in the studio, and we'd be drawing her, her portrait for a while, and I'd be like, I can't stand drawing this person anymore. I'm throwing in a, I'm going to put her in a spacesuit. That'd be more interesting. I'm going to draw a spacesuit. How would that pose 
have all that piping and tubes and oxygen and fluid control and heat sensors and little Venny spinny things and gas tanks and like helmets like that that's much more interesting to me uh, here we go so we're just gonna draw uh, a gun carriage here I don't know what this what do we got going on tank barrel something like that we're just gonna Get this thing. Yeah, this is. Oh, look how much better this is. This is just already amazing. Here we go. All right, we're just gonna quickly mass in the colors of this thing. It's got some kind of reflective sensory bit up there. And here we go. We're just gonna. Oh, this is. I'm just already feeling so much better. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about it. I'm just already. Oh yeah. Got some portholes drilled in there. That's what I'm talking about. Gun barrels there. Um, this is what the apocalypse is going to look like, ladies and gentlemen. Your golf course is now a staging area for the 1st Armored Division, 23rd Cavalry, 2nd Battalion. And uh, they're, here, they're here to make sure that you don't riot. <laughs> you don't get too out of hand with your social distance. About six feet. Six feet. I don't want that five foot, eight inch social distancing. Don't you dare say two meters. I know two meters is actually greater than six feet. This isn't socialist France. Look, the French made some good tanks. I, I, I used to talk down on the France, the French military and stuff. Then I watched a documentary on their foreign legion. How basically anyone from the all over the world can just like shit. Like, you know, if you're willing to sacrifice yourself, you can gain French citizenship, learn French, and uh, you know get a new name, get a whole new name. If you're just willing to uh, risk life and limb in the jungles of Belize uh, to survive their ten week jungle indoctrination program if you survive malaria and are willing to throw your body uh, at ISIS for the cause of the French Revolutionary Republic um, you can have a life you know you can have a life here Beautiful. the French get a really bad rap from uh, World War II but they, they, they suffered from a lot of problems after World War One. You know, it was like three million French dudes died in World War One. They didn't want to do that again. And their generalship were these old fogies that really didn't even understand tank warfare and whatnot. So they had actually a pretty good tank at the beginning of nineteen forty one and had they been organized and updated their communications, they probably could have at least stalled the Panzers for a few months longer, but they just uh, didn't. They had a 19th century strategy to deal with a 20th century tactics, 20th century tactics and mobility uh, that the Germans actually exploited. Um, plus air power. I mean, the Luftwaffe was legit. Back in the day. Back in the day. Stukas, man. Dive bombing. Having those little raid sounds. Yep, we're, we're making progress now, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is cranking along. Got some tread bits. No, we're not really seeing the top corner tread there coming along, and uh, we're seeing one, two, three, four wheels. See, this is what I'm talking. I, you know, four is a manageable number. Four wheels is a lot easier for Tom to deal with than 40 billion blades of grass. It's just, that's just too much uh, abstraction there. All right, cool. All right, we got that. It's going to be mostly dark in here. Mostly dark. And we're just going to, you know, this is just enough, just enough military hardware to get me excited about drawing the rest of this landscape. And that's just what the necessary you know, evil is going to have to be. Y'all got to wait at home for another four weeks. Tom needs to draw some armor. 
in a landscape to make it interesting. You know, every a really great piece of armor and landscape that we used to have here in well, I'm not in Maryland, but close by in Maryland was the Aberdeen Proving Ground. Big beautiful field at Aberdeen. And then they had like 50 tanks, including World War II Panzers. You know, Yog Panther, you know, big old I think it was a Yog Tiger actually. 72 ton, heavily armored facade, big old like hundred and something millimeter gun. 100 millimeters, the diameter, not the length. The length is like 20 feet, 20, 30 feet. So you could be in a field outside and looking at the biggest things designed to kill people the world has ever seen. Again, that's not true either, because the biggest thing designed to kill people we've ever seen are probably warships. There's a German techno band I used to listen to uh, in the 90s called Feenflug. And uh, I got some of their industrial jams uh, in my in my head right now. All right. So what do we have? We have this tank that's just kind of randomly in this field. So we're going to shadow it a little bit here on the sides and on the ground. Give it a little grounding. Cool. And now we can know now Tom feels a little better. And we can approach the rest of the painting. Cool. So what do we do at this time? We flip it. Flip the image. Image, rotation. Uh, no, that's not the way I wanted to flip it. We're not painting Australia, ladies and gentlemen. Hunt Valley. All right, we're flipping it over there. All right, I'm seeing that that tank is a little far to the left. We're going to move back to the middle. Cool. Cool. Uh, something like that. It's pretty good. And let's go to the background. Grasses and other kinds of stuff. We're going to we're just kind of merge the whole image together. Because that's how I feel about everything right now. Bum, 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 bum. So clearly for this tank to have been there, it must have rolled through some uh, you know, areas. Because there's probably some treads both in front of and behind this thing. Probably came over from over there. You know, the proprietor of this golf course is like, what the heck, man? I didn't say you can, in governments, like, chill out, you still get to live. We're now putting the 3rd Armored, 24th Battalion, 1st Armored Division on the ninth hole. And, uh, you know, you can send us a bill for your side later. You know, we use more gasoline to move this division here um, than, you know, your operating expenses for five years. So, uh, chill out. We got helicopters flying in, carrying in more stuff. Let's go. We got a CH-53 uh, thingy back here, and it's it's got slung load, like a Humvee kind of thing. You know, it's it's coming in with more hardware. Go over there. That's important. We got trees. We got some trees. I'll show you some trees. I'll show you some trees, Dustin. How's that oil paint? How's that oil paint treating you right now? <laughs> Look, you're going to make a painting that's going to be beautiful today. And in all honesty, it's going to sell for some money. And I'm just going to be here upset playing Zelda. That's what I'm going to be doing today. It's like, oh, that painting. But ladies and gentlemen, we are doing this for your entertainment. We, me and my five personalities... We're logging in, drinking our Coca-Cola. This tree is the the metaphysical embodiment of the rage this tank has because it hasn't shot anything yet today. It's ugh, just stewing. And so it's this tank <laughs> tree coming out of the back of it. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Devin saying we haven't seen any tanks here today. Oh, not yet. They're coming. Just wait for that rumble down the street. Here we go. I'm gonna drive a tank to Dustin's house. If any of my friends have a tank they'd let me borrow just so I can win a bet. Um, I would appreciate that. Appreciate that. So I'm liking these like clusters of uh, kind of wheatgrass looking thing. I don't know what it is, but it's cool. 
It has a little like, explosion of vines coming off of it. We're going to pretend it's like a couple months from now when this is all like covered in fun stuff. Because it's just kind of dead, man. It's kind of dead. Let's make it more fun. Let's have a little bit more energy. So, oh yeah, I was going to flatten flatten this business. This, uh, flatten that business coming out. Let's put a tree back there. Full deuce. We're, we're going two hours, ladies and gentlemen. We already have an hour to go. It's like Bill Burr doing his full you know, 30 minute stand up in Camden, New Jersey, when he has that epic rant. It's kind of famous on the internet. The Philadelphia incident. Bill Burr roasts an entire audience of drunken New Jerseyans by uh, making fun of Philadelphia sports teams. So there's some kind of cloud over here behind, behind a CH50 Super Stallion delivering a Humvee. Where's the sun coming from? I think it's more from the left. This painting's a giant mess. So, as you guys are learning by watching me lose my mind, that landscape painting requires a deal of patience I might not have. Maybe you have it. Um, I might have it if. I was less worried about um, our existence as a civilization. So, so one of the things I admire very much about Dustin is just how chill he is about the universe. I don't think I could have I could have been a landscape painter. I don't have his level of patience, nor could I have been a woodworker. That it takes so much time to carefully sand and cut and paste and uh, you know create five jigs. to make the exact right hold and cut. I just did a thing that I hated. I hate when people in interview say, you know, that linking phrase, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know where you're going to go with it. You're just saying something new and fresh. So I want to have a buzzer in my car when I listen to NPR and they have some know-it-all guest on their show. And they drop the, you know, cough. <laughs> So just and every time it, it's cooked up to my phone to send negative likes to Terry Gross and the whole broadcast crew. We need to learn how to not use that phrase, you know, and literally and uh, um, uh, you know, all the sound effects. Unless it's for comedic effect. If you're being funny about it, okay, that's, you know, everything's good if you're being funny. What I'm saying is I have a great respect for people who are talented orators, who will yield the floor when they're out of things to talk about. Take a moment to compose their thoughts before speaking. All right, so those trees are getting quite a bit of light from the right side. In the photograph, it's the left, but I'm flipped here, if you remember. And they're pretty gray, pretty gray, pretty dead. Uh, there is some interesting shapes in their lighting because they're kind of moldy, kind of chunky, kind of... Dog, are they dogwoods? I'm not really sure. They're patchy. So just a little bit of noise, a little bit of energy in those trees there. Both have a definite lean to the outside of the image. It's like they've been blown that way a little bit. So I'm just going to redraw these limbs so that it starts to favor that direction. Yeah, I'm just getting the gist of it. I'm not painting these as portraits. I'm just loosely affiliating a, a likeness with uh, this particular tree. So it's a little shorter there and a little longer on the other, other side. The light coming from 
Light's coming from the inside. I have this backwards actually. So let's let's redraw the shadow on that side. Let's redraw the other hands. Let's over here. Something like that. Gosh, it's just so terrible. Not every day is gonna be a winner. I think Friday's stream drawing Dustin was a huge win as a Viking warrior guy. That worked out pretty well. We're gonna show that to everybody just because we need some happiness back in our life. Uh, that's not it. Stories by the fire. Let's open. Where did it go? Where did Dustin go? Dustin too? Is it this one? That's Dustin. I don't know where it went. Gotta go find it. Gotta go find it. Yeah, this one. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we did this guy last week. This was a ton of fun. See, this is more up my speed. Let's do a character with a big old halberd axe thing. I can do that. That's fun. And I will lose my mind when I'm drawing those things. Landscapes. Different story. Let's flip it back the other way again. Let's rotation. Horizontal. Let's make it a little brighter. Some happy little trees. Happy little seed. Super stallion. Thing. Crew chief. Side door. Front door. It's got a back kind of. This usually has a some kind of ramp coming off the back. Rotor blade, spinning. All right, we're getting lost in details that really don't matter um, because we're making it fun for ourselves. Probably a pretty bright kind of highlight thing. There, it's fine. Um, this lighting environment of the tank does not match the lighting environment of our scene, so we're going to change that right now by um, hitting the front ground with some green light, some light, some light, some light color there. Um, yeah, that's 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 better. Right, barrels and shadowing here, here. Um, light color. This would be shadow on this side. Uh, this uh, being lighter, yes, that's true, but that's too light. Sample some of the other green. Does that feel any better? All right, this would be darker here. Pick that color, darken it down, make it a little warmer. That's, is that better? Is that better? I'm not sure. This stream has gone off the rails so hard, I don't think we're going to be able to recover from that. Ladies and gentlemen, making artwork is all about taking the craziness that's in here and putting it somewhere else. That's where we're doing it. Right. So we're trying to reduce the contrast in the background of our scene. Making marks, making sound effects. Uh, we lost sight of these trees here. Um, I'm getting too warm. Take that off. Throw that over there. I'm not hearing sound effects on my computer, so this is coming off too. Just letting it out. Just let it out. Let it go. Let it go. Hmm. Here we go. Let's make some marks. Let's make some make some shapes. So remember when we talked about the big little Big, medium, little. We're going to do that over here. We're going to have like a medium kind of bush, tall bush, and like a slightly smaller one. So a chunk here, big chunk here, big chunk here, smaller chunk there. That's kind of interesting. We mostly dark. Just the highlight on the right side. And then the ground around it has this kind of orangey, kind of pink. Viney dead thing. Man, I hope, I really hope Dustin's making a nice painting on all this, just because I'm, I'm wasting everyone's time here. Pretty, so kind of nice. 
So we're gonna we have a couple of these evergreens that are stacked up here. It looks like there's three kind of in succession, and then there's a tree. Decidu I really have to peek in there. There's a deciduous tree that looks kind of wiry and sleepy, hollow, spooky, um, and just just completely riddled with vines and, and junk. As, as I'm looking into this cluster of trees back there, the same thing is another one of these wily trees back there. Barely any highlight color in it at all. It's very dark, maybe wet. It's just the edge gets hit and illuminated. Only a few of the surfaces. And that purple noise is is what's like the branches of the tree up close, and then there's a darker background of uh, schmutz and um, kind of dead things in the background. So I'm just gonna kind of fade. The, it's it's very horsehair kind of brushy. The number of tree limbs that are kind of going off into the into the sky in the background behind this tree that's here. I'm not to get on the electrical after this. I'm going to work the, work this body up. The frustration of doing this. What's this tree doing? We made a mess uh, behind here. We're gonna clean this mess up. So what's th what's the silhouette look like? Let's pretend this is uh, a hair uh, on someone's head. Um, that's doing that. That's doing that. And then it's a wide fan, pretty even up top. Pretty even up top. And then a kind of a thinner bit. And then a thicker bit. And then specifically two branches there. And it, it's really clumped up and thick there. So we're going to have a dark side. Dark side there. And then just like chunky bits. Because these limbs are facing towards us or facing away from us. We're not, and we're not getting the full length displayed. Because, you know, you want something displayed full length, you have to look at it from profile. You know, my hand looks very small that way. Looks much longer that way. Profile. Portrait, three quarter, above three quarter, something like that. Something like that. How's the comments? Nothing to report. Nothing really interesting at all. So I see some people like the video uh, landscape link. Jesse Southern and my cousin Cheryl. Thank you for the likes. Brandon reposted and tagged me. Thank you. And then people in my art party group that I posted. Um, also like it. Thanks to you, Alex, Anna, Alexander, other people. Uh, appreciate you liking the video. I want to call this stream "Losing Your Like How to Not Lose Your Mind by Losing Your Mind." You know, preemptively losing your mind. Lose your mind in your creative process, so that in the real world you're rational, you're calm, you're thinking. When I'm exercising regularly, which is something I'm not doing a very good job of, when I'm exercising regularly in the real world, I find I get my anxiety, my stress, my opinions. Oh, this thing I did when I was a kid, I'm so embarrassed by. Something I did when I was in college uh, 20 years ago, I'm so embarrassed by this thing. Uh, let me work that out. Let me, let me focus on that miserable piece of memory in my brain and then put it into the elliptical and sweat it out of my head. Metaphorically, you don't actually lose your thoughts by sweating, but it helps. In like 20 minutes of high intensity cardio while thinking about something negative that happened and suddenly I feel fine again. Which is obviously what I need to be doing right now. As soon as this is done, getting on the track shorts, putting on some, some Adidas. I'm gonna turn some of this Coca-Cola into kinetic energy. 
this. So it's all potential sugar water right now. This barrel isn't very straight. We gotta fix that. Third ID would not be um, approved of that. I'd be thrilled about a barrel with that much deformation. When drawing a barrel, it's important to get the highlight of the crown of the barrel just underneath. Before this broadcast, I hope y'all were having a good day. Hope you have a good uh, time doing whatever you're doing. You weren't. I hope you're realizing that your day might be better than mine. So I'm just mad. I'm just mad at this landscape painting right now. And so I'm ignoring it. I'm procrastinating. You know, even this little like hook in front looks like a middle finger. It, the, this just latch attachment point looks like this finger's knuckle is, you know, giving me the bird. Dude, what did I do, dude? I brought you into existence. That's how probably every parent feels when their kid talks back to them. What are you giving me a hard time for? I am not the cause of your misery. Dude. Can't forget headlights. Not be confused with headlights. Don't want that either. I wonder if headlights cases are up or down uh, in this period of national stress. Or is everyone just shaving their heads at home? Screw it! It's the apocalypse! <laughs> That might be the live stream next week. Tom fully loses his mind and shaves his head. I think this would be a little lighter up front. That is much more interesting to me. Okay more grasses so when we're drawing grass it, it is really good to start with a dark dark grassy color and uh, usually you have the most healthy newest grass blades coming out the bottom so we start with really saturated something like that and we go less saturated and thinner and then we can come up a little higher and then at the top we have the least most yellow and uh, maybe a little less saturated uh, blades at the top of the thing. So individually, grass almost looking like that. Let's get my head to be smaller. I, I, yeah, that's much better. Much, much smaller there. Much smaller. But uh, in this case, it, it seems like it was really in the in the real world or in this scene we have very dark clumps um, that have. Uh, some healthy blades coming out of it. And then maybe last year's, last fall's longer dead bits sticking out of top of that. So this was a clump of grass that's been around for a while. And it has like new growth that's healthy coming in. And then the old growth is, is still there. It hasn't been completely trampled or uh, dissolved into nature. Realizing I had the shadow was the sun side of the wrong side of these clumps here. I have this tree I need to go back and revisit. It doesn't this this front tree isn't as tall as the tree behind it, but it is very dark. You know, something I'm noticing with picture taking these days is it's very easy. Uh, for these photos to self-correct, like there's color adjustment. The colors you're seeing in your photos are not what's real in the real world. 
and so you're getting these super like Instagram filtered photos that get sent to you and you don't even realize you're doing it. Like my phone has an HDR mode and it's five years old. So it's taking three pictures, underexposing one, overexposing another one, and then best guess estimating those all together. So you get richer colors and higher contrast, or maybe lower contrast, but with higher color saturation that's really visible in the real world. So I think part of the problem of today, people are looking at these really super gorgeous photos that everyone's posting. We're forgetting that those are highly filtered. You know, not only were they curated and selected to be the, just what, the, the best slice of that person's day, week, or month, or whatever, but it's also edited. Like the photo has been adjusted, manipulated, airbrushed automatically to be this incredible, wonderful, beautiful image. So it makes people looking at it, you know, feel worse about them not having that in their life. You know, remember, this is, you know, most things that are on the internet are kind of fake. There's a couple things that are real, like, the poor video from Brooklyn of the guy watching bodies being forklift onto the back of a refrigerator truck today. I don't know how you get any realer than that. That's a pr pretty freaking real. Uh, it, it's hard to see. You have to take his word for it that those were bodies going to the back of the truck. I think there's been photos released from the inside of that truck showing the bodies on the floor. At least not that truck, but a truck. But I guess the guy's word for it that he says those are bodies on a forklift in a very blurry video image, and you have to take his word for it. Uh, but that's the exception to the rule. The rule is most of the things you see on the internet or on Instagram are curated, filtered, adjusted. So they're only 5% real. And not really. Um, you know, if, if you have a friend that's posting beautiful things, celebrate them and feel, be happy for that friend that they're making a thing and making it beautiful. They're not trying to say, like, your life is worse than my life. They're not intentioning to do that. They're just trying to share that, hey, I'm alive, too, and I'm having a good time. Like, hopefully, you're doing something. Maybe I'm inspiring you to do something really good. They're not like, intentionally trying to put people down by sharing what's good in their life. It's on individuals to uh, maybe not interpret it as being bad. Like, there are people who are trying to influence you, sure, marketing, media, advertising, and it's really up to you to decide, am I going to be influenced that or not? Did I just contradict myself from five minutes ago? Probably. Probably. That's the duality of man. What do you all think about Tom Brady going to Tampa Bay? Will we have an NFL season this fall? I say yes. I say we will have a NFL season this fall. It might be while wearing surgical masks, though. They're going to have their helmets on. Maybe the mask is going to be on. And then there's going to be a whole wave of football players, especially defensive ends and linebackers, that are going to adopt Darth Vader masks that make those sound effects and the NFL is going to allow them all to have batteries and voice modifiers in their helmets. That's the future, ladies and gentlemen. I think tomorrow I might live stream the NFL of the future, where everyone's wearing a gas mask and PPE while slamming into each other at uh, 25 miles an hour. That might be the future. Tom Brady going, it's just... You know, I love me some Tampa Bay. I mean, I think the Bucks uh, have a nice party atmosphere. I love the pirate ship in the stadium. More of that kind of fun Disney World theming to NFL parks I think should be a thing. I think they should have big slides going through NFL parks. I think that there should be a hot dog can. Boom! It's launching hot dogs at people. I think beer should be $4. I don't, you know, they're making $3 profit anyway. You know, $1 to the seller. Uh, $1 to the stadium, $1 for the brewer, and $1 for the trucker that brings the beer to the state. I think that's good. I don't think this nine fifty dollars a beer is ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's why, um, Tom Brady, though, man. Florida? Maybe someone can explain it to me. So I just, I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, why would you keep playing? You, he's already worth $100 million. He's retired, dude. Stay at home. Oh, but he likes playing. He likes being outside. Oh, coach. 
get the fucking Pop Warner. When you know when we're playing football again, Pop Warner it up. So this tree is is having a hard time with things. This tree over here is struggling. It's missing a lot of its top branches. I want to. I'm guessing this tree is dead. This tree is deader than that forklift full of bodies in uh, New York. Too soon, Tom. Sorry. This tree is uh, is is had enough. This is gone. It is gone. Somebody's grandma was on that forklift, probably. That sucks. But veterans know this. You gotta go to gallows humor sometimes to get you through. Uh, to get you through. What's up? Hey, it wasn't me. Wasn't me. Could be. Could be me. This tree is struggling because there's no little branches. I mean, maybe some new little branches can grow out of it, but I'm not thinking that's very likely. I think it's very likely. At this point in the drawing, I'm trying to reduce the amount of contrast. Uh, seeing how it's working. So that tank being in the foreground with the tree coming out right behind it, that tree is actually higher contrast than the tank itself is. So I'm going to pick the background color and just lightly glaze over the, the branches and stuff just to knock it back just a little bit. And I hope Dustin's being more productive than I am right now. I keep, I keep mixing up some beautiful sage green color, some gorgeous green, some satisfying purple pink for the little berries and stuff. And he's got this nice view of a pond, and that air is fresh. And he's thinking, oh, this is just such a wonderful day to be outside. And he's thinking, oh, my friend Tom's having a good time painting this landscape. Ladies and gentlemen, we're making progress. We're actually learning. What are we learning about today? You might ask. Well, these little clumps of uh, grass that's collecting around vines is interesting. I'm learning how much happier I am when I have a little bit of hardware to draw occasionally. Maybe just a couple strokes just over here. Maybe I need to multitask my artwork where I have a landscape of one file open and then a tank or a space commando. Space shuttle door gunner kind of person on another window so I can go between the two and maintain my sanity uh, while losing my sanity. Loose, maintain. Lose, maintain. Some shadow over here. A little blur. More of this sage. It's not sage. This is the straw. Straw colored insanity. This is goes a little white every once in a while. That would be very dark as it's in shadow here. This would be dark in shadow here. Some darker green, some fresh, fresh new grass coming up. It's like just clumps of just garbage, just so much noise over there, it's a darker in the background. Alright, how, how are we feeling about this, this whole image? Well, we have a mix of line work and painterly work. I'm not getting any separation between the back of this tank and what's behind it, so I'm going to darken this back edge and then create a gradient moving forward. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm. 
Yep. I'm seeing that this tread actually has some wobble to it. Something like that. There's going to be a spool, spool guy kind of in there, tensioner type thing. You know, some people have good intentions for you. It's like telling, maybe, maybe Tom, you should eat some more vegetables. Maybe you should you know, take it a little easier. Well, then I wouldn't be me, all right? It'd be somebody else. Well, you gotta do things for yourself. As long as they're gonna hurt other people. If you're hurting other people, then that's a problem. Then you gotta probably stop doing that. Hopefully, you know you best. Now, if people are depending on you and you're erratic, well, you're going to lose friends that way. Friends want consistency. So a little couple gaps inside of here. It's good to come back in and paint the negative space in your image. couple highlights on that tree, not many, but they exist and they're kind of greenish. This is darker, and actually just about as tall. the cloud came out in the background that's just looking at the left and then drawing on the right like it's got enough chunkiness and it's got maybe three or four tones to it of gray I and mean, that's fun I like just letting my subconscious just go with it it's actually pretty challenging to narrate as I'm going. So doing a self-analysis thing. I'm actually seeing a little bit of that green of the golf course kind of coming through. So there's one little line of that with saturated green. And there's some, some darker green back there too. And there's some kind of path to the white. Um, kind of painted cart path back there. There's a couple, some bonkers. There's another patch of, of dead grass. There's some power lines way in the distance. It's going to be real hard to make any sense. So I'm just going to make a lot of marks for um, trees in the very background. There's a hill back there. Just a lot of vertical lines. And then I'll maybe paint over a little bit. There is some, some kind of grassy field. So I'm just doing a couple horizontal marks. Maybe a few little highlights in there. And then redrawing the trees in the foreground. And then 50% lines of the trees in the background. Right back there. Uh, then there's some more cloudy kind of layer. Some kind of puffy clouds back there. 
Let's go lighter. Here. More saturated blue sky. That's fun. That's fun. It's occasional white spot. So we've actually approximated a few trees here. Like as I'm going back and forth between my reference and the background of my scene, uh, I have like mixed and shrunk a couple trees together. So these two small trees on the left have become these two wider trees on the left here. And then these two uh, kind of fully realized branchy trees kind of combined into one in the middle. And then I've maintained this triage, a triad, a triad of evergreen trees in the background. There's one more back there, and then there's just this mess of sticks and stuff on the right. So, yeah, kind of screwed some stuff up, but I don't really care. I don't really care. I don't really care about it. Why? Because the audience isn't going to see uh, the source material unless you share it with them. Uh, maybe they will. Maybe they will. Uh, I'm not going to worry about myself with that. No, I'm more worried about am I getting the likeness of this armored gun carriage? Turn that back. Maybe that. A little rim light. Let's hit it with just a little bit of a kind of rim thing. Maybe make it stand out. That's cool. This has been an absolute failure of the drawing. Making some sense. Let's add some specificity here. Let's take one area and just... Now usually I'm staying away from the details because we want to make sure the whole image works. But uh, this is now the point where we need some specificity because it's just noise. There's too much of this random planning stuff. We need a few moments that the viewer can lock onto and say, ah, okay, here's a detail that I can believe in, that I can lock onto, that'll hold, I can grab onto, because I'm sliding off this canvas. My eyes is glazing over the whole thing and sliding right off. I need a little point to grab onto to keep my attention. So we are going to specifically draw one little area of a uh, little dead sage grass. It's going like this. It's going across here. That specific detail hopefully is enough to hold people in place. Just brief enough to for us to um, get them excited to go somewhere else. So a little bit more saturated at the bottom. A little bit drier and yellower at the top. And even going to white. So on the edge of that thing. And then there's gonna be let's just turn this into a little stick. It's like a little branch stick kind of thing. Maybe there's a little tree that was trying to grow out of there. And I'm seeing a little hole that a mouse might hang in. A little mouse hole right there. And then cover up the base. Cover up the base with it's like this tree has a friend, his brother. Big sprig, twig, that's the word, twig, twig is the word. So, more detail here, maybe a clip. Cool. And this is a bunch of purplish, dark brown, maroon vines that are coming out together that I took a mini liberties with before. 
See, why do I hate drawing these? Because these are no fun to walk through. When you're in the woods and you come across a patch of briars, it might be raspberry bushes in the summertime, and those are lovely. But when you're just walking through in the wintertime, it's just vines and little tiny sharp little objects on them. No fun. No fun. So, some matted down, pretty flat looking stuff. Pumps of leaves, another tree, what am I saying, grass, pumps of grass, boom, boom. It's occasionally like a dark, occasionally like a very dark, very saturated cluster of healthy, young, brand new gr grass kind of sneaking in to the dead stuff, recovering landscape, recovering ground to what was lost before. Did say leaves, didn't I? It's gonna be cool. Beds of leaves. Look, we've been chopped, chopped up with mulcher. We lined about occasional piece of straw. We're lying about on the ground here. See that little bit of specificity gives us like an anchor point to hold on to. The viewer can see that. And go, ah, okay, I can hold on to that little bit before moving along. All right, so we now need to do that on the right side. Let's find some kind of detail over here. Oh my goodness, we only have 15 minutes left. Oh, I'm thrilled. So happy. Put some marks. There's generally a flow downhill of the lighter dead. Um, wheat kind of long grass with the occasional upsprit upsprout where it collected around a vine or like a little mini tree that's kind of growing up in the wild grasses and that area contrasts gives us a little bit to sink our teeth into or visual teeth as it were and there's a line of long grasses if there's going to be a, like a light area, you got to have a dark area uh, next to it or beneath it. It's pretty cool. A little bit of excitement there. A little updraft. So I'm actually just like structuring. Each of these marks is a blade of grass or straw that is lying on top of our form. So I'm doing a bit of blind drawing here, I'm making marks while just looking at the angle of stuff. And hopefully that informs the specificity that we can have in our drawing. A specific mark represents a haptic, a form, a shape, direction, vector, something. A little browner for a leaf. Little dead leaves that are on the ground. Decaying. You know, decay is often thought of an, uh, as a negative word, but it, it's a very positive thing. Decay allows the old to be recycled into energy, and construction materials for the new thing. I think we should embrace decay a little bit more. Maybe decay is happening because the host is dead. And we want to let it die and move on. Something new can grow in its place. You know, mushrooms, mushrooms come from decaying trees or something. Mushrooms are good. Zelda's got all kinds of mushrooms. There's gonna be a hub. Each of those wheels. Shadow. 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 Oh, I got my pen tool involved. Didn't want to do that. A little blue for the shadow. Just a little bit. Let's go 30%. Pretty dark. You know, 43%. That's pretty good. It's a little bluer. That's cool. 
Cool, cool, blue, blue. See, there's a little blue kind of grounds it in the space a little bit. And then we want a little bit warmer green and highlights. So it's going to go warmer because it seems like a warm day out there. Go to screen mode a little bit. So 33%. Normal. Muzzle is going to be the closest thing to us, so we want to cut that pretty sharp. And I've redrawn this muzzle four times. I know, I know. We've drawn it a bunch. We want a little highlight from the inside of the crown there. Some kind of cap, some kind of end. It's not a muzzle brake, because there'd be these ports on the side of it if it was a brake. So it's just a end cap shape, like a mod deuce. Got like a 50 cal mod deuce machine gun it has this like a thicker end to it. Um, I think it's so that you can thread on. It's like a thread protector. So there's actually screw-like threads that are done at the end of the barrel, and this is just a cap that keeps it protected. A little blue on the, on the back side of that. That's, I think that's a good color. That's a good color there. The color there. This is not straight at all. That's fine. We can just elevate, elevate a little bit. I'm sure that barrel would taper downward. Um, so like wider at the back, narrow at the front. But because it's in perspective, it's actually uh, looks like it's perfectly tubular. Tubular, dude. There we go. What's happening in the background? This is all green golf course grass in the background here. Darker than that, though. Because it's on the shed. Shaded part of the hill. Darker there, some really dark evergreens back there and back here. Whoa, must have been a little bit of schmutz on the screen. Made a resistant kind of sound. Some kind of hook shape in the front. Some, some kind of hook toe area thing. So I'm sure Dustin's video is going to have a lot better content than mine is. Subscribe to Art of the Craftsmanship, Art of Craftsmanship channel, and they'll have some great content there. Let's find it up for you. Let's see what that looks like. Art of Craftsmanship. Looks like this. 61,900 subscribers. Making knife sheets. Quick. Chat with Dustin Corinne, St. Patrick's Day Live, forged rustic coat rack with painted landscape, making a longbow. This one was my favorite because I'm all about that history. 
and the longbowmen of the of the British Empire were a real big deal. So he took a piece of Osage and hand pulled this thing and talked about his process of finding the edge, finding the the, the outer edge of uh, layers, and then cutting. Just skipping ahead here, how he makes it straight. Just uh, absolutely amazing. This this whole video is great. Five hundred and sixty four thousand views. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Half million views. Dustin, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. And at the end, he is uh, he's he's shooting it. Look at that stud. Wow, got a little arm wiggle. Awesome. Great shot, Devin, who does the videography. Taking his own life in his hands, getting this beautiful shot of an arrow. Super cool. That's an awesome uh, video, making a bow. I'm just going to copy this link and put it right into the stream chat. Um, boom. Check it out. He... Uh, Devin saying, check it out. He will work for like 15 more minutes to finish. Wow. What's up, L? L, this has been the toughest podcast yet. The toughest broadcast because it's uh, landscapes is not my forte, man. Trying to find the beauty and the specificity in the landscape and the environment has just been so difficult for me. What am I happy about in this broadcast? Um, well, I actually like the size of the clouds in the background. I did that by accident. And I feel pretty good uh, about the size of that cloud versus the trees in the foreground. I think the tank was a giant win for me. It made it interesting to continue doing. I'm looking at it in the small screen, and uh, it feels pretty good. We're getting some of that circular color stuff working in. Okay, i got to finish the little right side because the right side is clearly unfinished here. I need a little bit more stuff. So I'm looking at the reference picture. What do we have to work with here? Just some varieties of grass what are we what are we gonna put I mean just this pattern is okay I, I'm more locking on to this specificity of this clump of grass with a couple sticks and some dead leaves off of it so I might do more of that kind of thing I think that's more interesting so we're going to uh, try to try to capture a bit of that um, it's got some long All right, so we're, we're drawing with white and longer um, tendrils of of last year's tall grass, and then we have a couple sticks that were maybe smaller tree vine proto tree proto vine kind of things. I mean, we'll just do two of those. Then there's a very saturated new grass. Underneath, maybe a little darker, and then the occasional, like, lighter, more minty, more minty color. It's going a little bit to the left. You see how the wind, like, has pushed more of the branches in that direction? Uh, we're going to go with that and kind of do the same thing in different places here. And then there's pockets of very dark shadow. Um, some of it's brown, some of it's more green. And then we're going to put just a couple of these like gray leafy shapes on these vines. because They're kind of interesting. They're very stark. It's this high contrast element in the middle of a field of nothing. So it's, it's got a light top. And then since these leaves are completely dry, that they're completely opaque, when a leaf is alive, it has a bit of that fleshy translucency to it. So light's entering one side and transmitting through the fluid layers to the other side. So most leaves aren't going to go completely to black on the back side. There's going to be some light transmission going through the green layer. This is not the case with a dead leaf. It thins out and it becomes kind of solid. And then at that point, it's just fuel. There's no fluid that's transmitting light. It's just dry uh, cellulose kind of stuff. A cellular structure, not cell cellulose, is some kind of like that sugary bit. Um, I don't know. So more high, more specular, little bit. So that's some of that detail 
that we talked about the eyeball can latch onto and hold on in this canvas where it just wants to slip off because when it's when a canvas is that abstract, when your art is that abstract, there's nothing to really grab onto, then you're gonna lose people. If it's too too blurry and too messy, it's just, it's just slippy. It's just gonna be slippy. And then we have a little dead patch, maybe some drier, kind of sagey area. Right there. And let's get the little texture back into that bit. So you can do a lot of depth convincing with your textures. You know, the, the frequency and tightness or blurriness or more specific, the more textured your foreground is, the closer to you it'll feel. There's any horizontal line that's just obviously a brush mark up here. I'm just gonna kind of brush into a little bit. Maybe a little bit more brightness to that front. Long grass. These are really bright, and they they're they're two different clusters. So there's like a cluster coming from this point, and there's a cluster coming from this point. So the line should be reflecting that. That's cool. So that feels better. Now we have something there on the right, and uh, let's do another um, patch of grass here, just so it doesn't feel like it's alone. More browner at the bottom where the shadow is. So maybe a couple dark spots in this grass that is occluded from the light. If we had all month and some uh, Adderall, maybe we could focus on every single blade of grass and paint each individual blade of grass like it's a special snowflake, but we don't. We gotta wrap this puppy up. Cause it's just been about two hours. It is three o'clock, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and it is time to wrap this sucker up. I appreciate you for hanging out with me today, going on this uh, drawing adventure where Tom mostly lost his mind and then found it again, only to lose it again, only to find it again. And I hope all you have an adventure like that, but more productive, You know, where you lose your mind a little bit, but don't hurt yourself, don't hurt anybody around you, and then you can find yourself again. That's what vision quests are all about. Uh, when you're older, if you're, if you're older than, um, 18 years old, you know, feel free to Google search what a vision quest is all about. And if you're younger than that, maybe think about, it. you know, put that in the back of your mind and maybe someday when you're old enough, hey, uh, mommy, daddy, I want to talk about uh, vision quests. What do you know about them? And uh, then daddy's going to be like, well, you see, son, back in the 70s, uh, we went to the desert once and there was this uh, cactus there called peyote and we got, we got down with it. And they'll tell you about that when you're older, when you're older. Devin sent me an email. I will check it right now and we will talk about it. And that's how we'll wrap up this art stream. Look, we made we made it a mobile gun carriage, a CH-53 mm -hmm. helicoptering in a truck and a landscape based on a photograph my friend Dustin sent. Uh, let's see how his painting's doing. Let's see how his painting's doing. This is fantastic. His painting is actually a really cool little work of art. Like, how cool is that? See, there's all this little beautiful like information and uh, kind of detail. See, look how selective he went with it. So he focused on one little area, too, and used a knife, I would assume, to get some of those edges in. So he went kind of purple, kind of, oh, I like this tree back here. Look at that shit. Look at this worn paper. What a cool kind of trimmed edge. Got a little bit of that yellow in there. So that's fun. So he he did a lot more with the distant trees, getting the shape of the distant trees in here, and getting the general shape of the uh, of the trunk of that tree in the foreground. I suspect he set up in a slightly different area than I did. We both got that same tree back there, uh, but this is pretty fun, man. That's cool. That's cool. Very 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 nice. He's really got the tonality. That, so his distance. Objects are going to be less saturated than the close-in objects. The close-in objects got more color saturation, brings you into the foreground. So pretty cool. Um, mine has a tank in it. It feels pretty good. You know, definitely more local color, more saturated. One's not better than the other. Just mine's got a mobile gun carriage with a 100 millimeter anti-armor, anti-infantry combination, multi-purpose gun system. Forward-looking infrared sensor. Headlights, taillights. 
32 ton tracked vehicle, 30 miles per hour over a train. Look, love all you guys. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for hanging out with me, encouraging me to draw. This was fun, even if I made a big stink about it. And I uh, hope y'all have a great day.